All right, so you want to dive into Stoicism, huh? Specifically, you want to explore the ideas of Gaius Musonius Rufus. Virtue, resilience, living a meaningful life. Sounds like you're in the right place. And might I add, Musonius Rufus is a fantastic choice. What makes him so fascinating is he didn't just talk about Stoicism. He lived it. Showed everyone these principles. They weren't just like abstract ideas. They were tools for dealing with life's daily chaos. Love that. And it's funny you should mention that because one quote of his that always stuck with me is, if you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Ooh, that's a good one. Right. It's like that instant gratification trap we all fall into, right? Like endlessly scrolling social media instead of tackling that project we've been putting off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Musonius was centuries ahead in recognizing that human tendency. And what's interesting is how he links it to shame. It's not just about, you know, potentially missing out on something good. It's the lingering feeling of betraying our own values. Makes you think. For sure. Makes you really weigh those seemingly small choices we make every single day. And speaking of choices, another quote that kind of stopped me in my tracks was this. We begin to lose our hesitation to do immoral things when we lose our hesitation to speak of them. It just feels so relevant today with the constant, I don't know, negativity and hate speech online, you know? Oh, absolutely. And you're spot on connecting that to today's world. Musonius, he was talking about the gradual erosion of our moral boundaries and mm -hmm. like, Think about how easily we get desensitized to extreme views in those online echo chambers. It's like the more we see these ideas, the less shocking, less unacceptable they become. It's a slippery slope. It is a very slippery slope. Makes you really think about the weight of our words, both online and offline. Okay, so that's some pretty heavy stuff. But thankfully, Musonius also offered a lot of guidance on how to live a more, shall we say, virtuous life. He believed that the human being is born with an inclination toward virtue, and he also said, for mankind, evil is injustice and cruelty and indifference to a neighbor's trouble, while virtue is brotherly love and goodness and justice and beneficence and concern for the welfare of your neighbor. So are we saying humans are hardwired for good? That's the crux of Musonius' philosophy, stoicism in a nutshell, really. It's about recognizing that we all have this capacity for virtue. And it's not about some grand gesture, but about how we treat each other in our everyday interactions choosing kindness instead of indifference, fighting for justice, even when it's uncomfortable. It's a continual practice. It's a great reminder that we all have the potential to make a difference. Now, Musonius also had some interesting opinions on wealth and material possessions. I mean, there are a ton of quotes about that. Like, what good are gilded rooms or precious stones fitted on the floor, inlaid in the walls, carried from great distances at the greatest expense? These things are pointless and unnecessary without them. Isn't it possible to live healthy? Aren't they the source of constant trouble? Don't they cost vast sums of money that through public and private charity may have benefited many? He sounds like a modern day minimalist blogger, would you, you say? He totally does. But behind the humor, there's a really profound message there about how chasing external validation, material possessions, it usually leaves us empty. Musonius, he challenges us to find contentment within ourselves, not in what we own which let's be honest is incredibly relevant in our consumer driven world okay let's shift gears a bit and talk about resilience something i know our listeners are keen to unpack musonius was really big on this and this quote is just well listen for what does the man who accepts insult do that is wrong it is the doer of wrong who puts themselves to shame the sensible man wouldn't go to the law since he wouldn't even consider that he had been insulted Besides, to be annoyed or angered about such things would be petty, instead easily and silently bear what has happened, since this is appropriate for those whose purpose is to be noble-minded. Wow. Intense much. Is he saying we should just let people walk all over us? It's an understandable question. It's easy to see that quote and think it's about being passive, but it's more about recognizing what we can and can't control. Gustonius isn't saying we should tolerate abuse. He's saying that stewing over insults, letting them control our emotions, that just gives the doer of wrong more power than they deserve. True strength, real strength, it lies in how we choose to respond, in focusing on our own inner state. So how can we cultivate that kind of resilience, especially with all the negativity and criticism that's just, well, unavoidable these days? It's a practice, for sure. Not something you can just turn on and off. But Musonius would say it starts with awareness. When you're faced with negativity, take a beat before you react. Ask yourself, is this within my control? Is my anger or frustration actually helping me? 
or am I just adding fuel to the fire? Sometimes not reacting, that's the most powerful response. Taking back control, I like it. Exactly. Okay, one last nugget of wisdom from Musonius before we wrap things up. He said, just as there is no use in medical study unless it leads to the health of the human body, so there is no use to a philosophical doctrine unless it leads to the virtue of the human soul. Feels like a challenge, doesn't it? It is. He's calling us to action. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not enough to just read about these ideas or even, you know, listen to us talk about them. The real transformation, it happens when we put them into practice in our own lives. So, as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of Musonius Rufus, here's the takeaway. Virtue is the cornerstone of a fulfilling life. It's about aligning our actions with our values, even when it's hard. It's about recognizing our words have power, that true happiness doesn't come from stuff, and that we all have this incredible capacity for resilience. And remember, you don't have to become a stoic sage overnight. Start small, pick one of Musonius's teachings that resonates with you, and, you know, see how you can bring it into your everyday life. Small steps, big changes, couldn't have said it better myself. Until next time, Keep exploring, wow. keep learning. Steady like a metronome, life ain't no paradise. Swimming dust in catacombs, mind steel clad, heart calm amidst the cyclone. Strength in the stillness where my scars has a keystone. Stoic sword slice through chaos, never once deterred. Struggle forge the iron will, silence is preferred. Pillars patience, wisdom's echo never slurred. Battlegrounds rage and virtues blaze undisturbed. Vice is tempted, whispers in the midnight. Virtues lantern, cutting through the dark night. Battle rages, yet I'm standing on the and height, stoic vision, crystal clear, guiding through the fight, running through the gauntlet, fire in my veins, burn, pain a teacher, lessons edged, pages that we turn, fortress of the mind, no retreat, no concern, virtue steady beacon, storms I discern, running through the gauntlet, fire in my veins, burn, pain a teacher, lessons edged, pages that we turn, fortress of the mind, no retreat, no concern, virtue steady beacon, storms I discern. Against the current, standing tall, never bent World spins frantic, I refuse to relent Timeless wisdom flows every single event Stoic calm, unyielding, life's true testament Weight of a thousand trials, break chains ascend Mind over matter, wounds men start again Clarity and silence, where's this anger transcend? Stoic path, unshaken Nothing till the more. very end And agree never to self-sabotage yourself No more self-condemnation that you cease to see the opportunities in this world. How beautiful our planet is. To think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world is an invitation out of your ego, out of your insecurities, out of what you think you cannot do. It is to look beyond your program. It is to think of your legacy. It is to think of what you will leave behind. It is to think of your contribution and your impact. Even in this moment, in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, ask yourself the question, what can I contribute? You see, conflict is necessary. Trial is, is needed. It causes us to create, to be proactive, to be inventive. It moves us to become pioneers. What type of mark will you leave in the earth? What will be your legacy? Man has always been haunted by the vastness of eternity. And so we ask ourselves, when we are long gone, will our names remain? I choose to live by choice and not by chance. I choose to make changes and not excuses. I choose motivation over manipulation. I choose to excel and not compete. It is better to act and repent than not to act and regret. Nothing in life that is worth having comes easy. Veritas vos liberabit. The truth shall set you free. Latin phrase. Life has a way of testing a person's will. 
either by having nothing happen at all or by having everything happen at once. Givers have to set limits because takers rarely do. The heart is the secret of the divine universe. Rumi Remember that the insult does not come from the person who abuses you or hits you, but from your judgment that such people are insulting you. Therefore, whenever someone provokes you, be aware that it is your own opinion that provokes you. Try, therefore, in the first place, not to be carried away by your impressions, for if you can gain time and delay, you will more easily control yourself. about who we are. We don't know, we don't go to the to where it happened. Life created this person, me. And I had to realize, man, that's okay, man. It's not my fault. Now I gotta go back and fix it though. So a lot of this isn't your fault, why you do some things you do, why you feel the way you feel. But no one's coming back to save your ass. You have to go back to where they started, wherever that place is for everybody. And have the courage to go back there and start fixing what broke you. I was just an insecure, scared kid. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. So the only way I could turn around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created, but I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's going to turn this person around is me. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you got to flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing, and that is yourself. And and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not going to find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Dick in your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror. That's all you can be afraid of. In every situation, life is asking us a question and our actions are the answer. Our job is simply to answer well. What is life? It is a flash of a firefly in the night. It is a breath of a buffalo in the winter time. It is as the little shadow that runs across the grass and loses itself in the sunset. The philosopher is the only one who is truly free. Plato. This quote highlights Plato's belief that true freedom lies in the pursuit of knowledge and the liberation from the constraints of material desires. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Your soul takes on the color of your thoughts. In any given moment, we have two options, to step forward into growth or step back into safety. Failure is a detour, not a dead-end street, Zig Ziglar. Sift their minds and understandings, and behold what men they be, whom thou dost stand in fear of what they shall judge of thee, what they themselves judge of themselves. Neither one. Don't be a follower. Read both books and make up your own mind. Here's what's important in the final analysis. One of the best phrases for the day, I make sure what you finally do 
is the product of your own conclusion. Make sure what you finally do is the product of your own conclusion. Meaning you don't just follow, but you listen to both sides of the argument. You listen to the controversy. You try to master the points on both sides or three sides or whatever. Then you start charting your own course. It doesn't make you, doesn't say you'll make always the right decision on what course to take or what to do. You can refine as you go, but make sure that what you do is the product of your own conclusions, conclusions from the debate, conclusion from what makes the best sense to you to try. Now, jot this down. Also give yourself a chance to change. Some things I held on to that I thought this was it, this was it. I'm telling you, after a while I gave it up, found out it wasn't it. So give yourself a chance to change. Refine your philosophy. Refine your direction. If you give yourself a chance to do that, here's what will happen down the road a ways. A new door will open that you haven't discovered before. Give yourself a chance to change. Reevaluate. So let your library be a testimonial of your dedicated interest in accelerated personal development, that you will read whatever you have to read. You will hear whatever you must hear, and you will watch and see whatever you must see in order to make your life refined and worthwhile and achieve all of your purposes. It takes a lot of effort to learn. It takes a lot of effort to grow. It takes a lot of Respect yourself and others will respect you. So, the unwilling soul sees what's hidden, and the ever-wanting soul sees only what it wants. The buck stops here, Harry S. Truman. Don't be scared because you don't have all the answers right away. You will learn through your experiences and find your own way to happiness.